Welcome to another Sunday with the story at home. And we want to just let you guys know we're excited you guys are here. We're excited for what God's continuing to do in this season. We want to remind and encourage you guys to continue to invite people to be a part of the story at home. You can do that by sharing the YouTube link and texting it to people. We're really believing that God's continuing to move in a powerful way, even though we can't gather together like we normally do on Sunday mornings. The Spirit of God is still using this to draw so many people to himself. And so let's be a people who's on mission and continue to encourage people to be a part of this. And hey, uh, we're just excited for the day. We're excited for what God's gonna do. And I'm specifically excited for a really cool kids craft. So if you guys got some kids chilling in the living room, you guys can bring them around, gather them around. We've got a simple kids craft this morning, but it's also really cool. So what you do if you have any paper plates, you just can kind of stack them on top of each other. There's three here actually. Stack three paper plates and you can cut out a heart. Then once you have the hearts cut off, it actually can come together and make a cool three leaf clover. And what we're encouraging you guys to do is to make a spring clover with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then you can just cut out the bottom piece of paper and make a stem. You can tape these together. You can glue them together. If you wanna color them, if you got some cool beads or glitter and you wanna glue that on to make it sparkly and shiny, that's totally cool too. But with this amazing, beautiful spring weather, we wanted to make a spring clover showing the Trinitarian God that we worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So kids, get some paper plates, get some scissors. We can't wait to see what you guys come up with. And parents, if you wanna tag us in your Instagram story, we'd love to see what your kids are doing and love to see those crafts. And we hope that they are enjoying it. Well, hey, uh, thank you uh, to everybody who's been by the office in the last couple of weeks and been dropping off canned food and sleeping bags to donate to the Ashland Resource Center. You guys have been incredibly generous and we're gonna be doing this for just another few weeks. And so if the Lord puts it on your heart to help give back to the community, the Ashland Resource Center right now is in need of canned food and also sleeping bags. And so if you have extra canned food laying around or while you're shopping, if you throw some in your cart and you wanna drop it off at the office during our normal office hours, that would be absolutely incredible. Sleeping bags as well. We're trying to provide as many sleeping bags for people in our community who are in need right now. And you can drop those off Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's our normal office hours. And hey, if there's anything that you guys need in this season as well, um, we'd love to give back to our church community. We'd love to give back to people who are in need. And so please don't hesitate to reach out, to stop by the office, to call us, to email us if there's something that we can help you with. We wanna love and serve and support you guys the best that we can in this season. So feel free to contact us or come by during normal office hours so that we can help support you guys in this season. Well, hey, one other way that you can support us and partner with us if the story is your home church and the Lord puts it on your heart to just partner with us financially, you can send a check-in to our P.O. Box, which is P.O. Box 959. That's Ashland, Oregon, 97520. You can also text give uh, any moment of any day through your mobile phone right there. You can text the word the story to 77977 and you can give through texting. Our website as well is storyashland.org. There's a give link right there and you can give through our website. Again, thank you so much for your guys' generosity in this season. You guys are making it possible for us to be able to help other people in need and that is such an amazing uh, testimony of the goodness of Jesus that we, the church, in this season get to be the hands and feet of Jesus and get to help so many people. You guys are a huge part of that, so thank you guys so much. Well, hey, with that being said, we're gonna transition into a time of worship. The band's gonna come out. They got some awesome songs for us more this morning. So let's prepare our hearts for this time of worship together. When darkness tries to roll Sorrow comes to steal the joy I own. When brokenness and pain is all I know, I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your life. My fear doesn't stand a chance when. Stay in your love, my 
and you are closer than a brother, Jesus. You are closer than. your Bibles this morning, you can open up to Philippians chapter 3. That's primarily where we are going to be looking. And uh, we are going to be picking up where we left off last week. And last week, my good friend Jeremy Hamasu shared with us about the church 
and the kingdom and how those two ideas correlate and relate with each other. And so today, I kind of wanted to piggyback off of that. We've been in a series talking about the church and what the church is. And uh, after listening to last week's teaching, I wanted to go a little bit deeper and pick up on the idea of the church and the kingdom and specifically how when you become a part of the church, you actually become a citizen of a different kingdom. And so today, specifically, what we're going to look at in the scriptures and see, which is a beautiful concept, is that the church, which is the people of God, we are citizens of a different kingdom. We are citizens of heaven. And as citizens of a different kingdom, the implications of this are, are so huge. Living on earth, yet being citizens of heaven, uh, we, we're foreigners here. We're, we're strangers here. The earth isn't our home. And as citizens of a completely different um, place, a, a heavenly city, that means the way that we act should be different from the world. The way that we look should be different than the world. The way that we speak, the way that we think, literally every aspect of our life should be um, affected and impacted by the reality that we, the church, are citizens of heaven and citizens of a different kingdom. And it's interesting, if you've ever traveled and, and got out of your, your own country, you'll see that when you go to different cultures, citizens of different countries and different places, they, they, they look different than us. They act different than us. They eat different than us. They communicate different than us. And I had this experience specifically when I got to travel Europe for four and a half months with my brother and one of my best friends. We were cruising around Europe and literally everywhere we went in Europe, all these strangers would always be looking at us and staring at us. And some people even wanted to take pictures of us because they just thought that we looked so weird. Granted, at that time, I did have insanely long hair halfway down my back. My brother Rousseau had this big giant afro. But all that's to say, we, we stuck out like a sore thumb. They knew, hey, you guys aren't from here. You guys are from a different place. And that was very noticeable. And the hard thing is with we being the church, um, we being citizens of heaven, it can be confusing to the world when we're supposed to be living like, acting like, behaving like, talking like citizens of heaven, and yet we, we, we don't look any different than the world. We just blend in with the, with the rest of the world. And so today, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about the importance of our citizenship and our identity as the church being citizens of heaven and how that impacts every single aspect of our life. So if you've got your Bible, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, Paul talks about our citizenship in heaven in many different passages, but this is the primary one I wanted to look at today. So he says this in verse 20, he says, but our citizenship is in heaven and from it, we wait a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So as the church, again, Paul's speaking to the church corporately, the church, the church of Philippi, as the church, our primary identity has nothing to do with the earth where we have lived up until this point in our life. Our primary identity is that we are citizens of another kingdom. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. Now, we have to get a little bit of cultural and hist historical context to understand the implications of what Paul was really saying here. Because when Paul wrote this to the church of Philippi, that you guys are citizens of a different kingdom, even though you live here on the earth, they would have got that. But if we don't understand the historical context, we can miss the beauty and the depth of what he's getting at. So when Paul wrote Philippians in the first century, he was actually a prisoner in Rome at the time. And he sent this letter to the Corinthians in Philippi from prison in Rome. And Philippi was a city of the province of Macedonia. So although it was in the province of Macedonia, here's the crazy thing. Philippi was an outpost of the Roman Empire. Rome was huge at that time and they were expanding and they were taking over cities and nations and countries. And the Roman Empire was establishing colonies all over the place. And Philippi just so happened to be one of those colonies. So it was in the province of Macedonia, and yet it was a Roman colony. And these unique communities, these unique colonies like Philippi, they were devoted to Rome. They would promote and preserve and protect the interests of Rome at all cost as the capital city. And no matter how far 
these colonies were from the capital city. The, the crazy thing is the, the whole entire culture was predominantly Roman. So you could visit Philippi, which was so far away from Rome, and yet you would feel like you were in Rome. The laws would be Roman, the customs would be Roman, the values, the dress, the food, everything about these Roman colonies, although they were so far from Rome, it reflected the values and the heart of the empire. It was distinctly Roman. And if you, again, if you visited one of those colonies like Philippi at that time, you would think, man, I'm in Rome. So check this out. When Paul writes to the Christians in Philippi, which was a part of the province of Macedonia, and yet it was a Roman outpost, a Roman colony, when he says to them, our citizenship is in heaven, to the Christians in Philippi, they would totally pick up on the analogy and the metaphor and everything that was going on in the culture at that time. This had deep implications for them. They would have understood this loud and clear. It would have penetrated their ears. And the message was that although you guys Christians are living there on this earth, although you're living in Philippi, you're actually citizens of a different kingdom. You guys are citizens of heaven in the same way that a lot of people lived in Philippi, a part of the province of Macedonia, and yet they were Roman citizens. They were foreigners and strangers and aliens to Philippi. Their heart was for Rome, but they were a part of a colony of Rome in a different location. And so what Paul's getting at here and Philippians 3.20 is he's saying to the believers of this earth, to the church of God, the church of Philippi, to our church, to every person who's a part of the church, a part of the body of Christ, he's saying our citizenship as the church is in heaven. Our citizenship is not here on this earth. This is where I live right now. The earth is where I conduct my life day by day, but my citizenship has nothing to do with this earth. The earth is not our home. And this whole entire idea that we are citizens of heaven and that the earth isn't our home, this aligns with the prayer that Jesus himself said and that he offered up to his disciples before his ascension. It's in John chapter 17. Jesus prayed a very beautiful prayer. And what he's getting at here in this prayer is this same concept that our home and our citizenship isn't in this earth, it's in heaven. We're citizens of a different kingdom. Here's what Jesus prayed right before his ascension. John chapter 17, verse 15 and 16. Listen to this. He says, I do not ask that you take them out of the world. That is the church. I don't ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. So Jesus prays for the church, for the people of God. He says to the Father, I, my, my prayer is that you take them out of the world, but rather keep them from the evil one. Keep them from the darkness that's a part of the culture of the world. Preserve them and protect them. And so this is such a beautiful thing that Jesus prays. He's saying, Father, would it be your will? Would it be your plan? Not that the church comes out of the world, but that they be, be protected from the evil one while they are in the world. So we as a people have, have been taught, and maybe if you grew up in church, you've been taught and you've been told this your whole life, that you know the world isn't our home and we, and we dream of heaven and we think about heaven, but many of us, although we know this reality that the, the earth is just our temporary dwelling place, many of us have set our stakes, driven our stakes so deeply in the soil of earth that we begin to feel so comfortable and think, you know what, the, the earth is my home. We begin to put all of our stock in the fact that we are citizens of earth. That's what we begin to believe because we look around us we look at our life right now where we're focused just on the here and now that we can begin to buy into the fact that this is all there is. All I have is the here and now. All I have is earth. All I have is this moment. And the reality is we've got so sucked into and, and so bought into and so adjusted to the good life in this world, as people would call it, that the appetites and attractions of this present world have blinded us from the spiritual realities and have blinded us from the ultimate reality reality that as followers of Jesus, our citizenship is not of this world. Jesus said, as I'm not of the world, you're not of the world. Our citizenship is in heaven. And so today I wanted to look at and discuss and ask the question, what would it look like to refocus and to reorient our entire lives around our primary identity, which is that we are citizens of heaven? What, what does that look like? 
What would it mean and what would it look like for you and for me to really live into, as the church, our primary identity, which is we're citizens of heaven. We're not of the world. Although we're in it, we're not of it. We're, we're, we're longing for a greater place. We're longing for a homeland. God has a greater plan for us than just the here and now. So what does that look like? Practically, how do I, how can you live as a citizen of heaven while I am a temporary resident of earth? Because as a follower of Jesus, that's the dual citizenship that we have right now. We're temporary residents of earth, and yet we have eternal citizenship in heaven. So what does that look like? What would my life look like? What would your life look like? How are we to live in such a way that we have an impact on the earth while we're temporarily here that has an eternal impact for our lives for all eternity? And so today, I have three main points that I want to share with you guys that I see rooted in the scriptures and rooted in the context of this passage where Paul says we're citizens of heaven. Three main points for how we can practically live as citizens of heaven and how that impacts our day-to-day life. So the first one will be this. Heavenly citizenship is a present reality, not just a future hope. This is so huge and so important to understand. I'll say it again. Heavenly citizenship is a present reality, not just a future hope. It's important to understand the context of this passage where Paul writes in Philippians 3.20 that we are citizens of heaven. The context of this passage is not so much about, I can't wait to go to heaven one day, as it is about living as citizens of heaven today in the here and now. And I want you to see this for yourself. Look back at Philippians chapter 3, starting in verse 17. We're going to lead up to verse 20. And listen to how Paul's talking here. In verse 17, he says, Brothers... Join in imitating me and keeping your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you, even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. And then he says, but to contrast with how these people live right now, but Our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we wait a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So check this out. Paul says a couple things in these verses leading up to our citizenship is in heaven. He says, brothers, join in imitating me. He says, this is how we live right now. Imitate me right now. And he says, keep our eyes on those who walked according to this example that you have in us. It's an example. We're walking. It's a day-to-day, the the way that we live our lives. And then he also says, which I think this is so amazing as well, he talks about in verse 18, the way that people live here and now on this earth. He says, their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. They glory in their shame. He says, with minds set on earthly things, the way that people live right now citizens of earth is right now their minds are set on earthly things but Paul says but for us right now our citizenship is in heaven our mind is not on earthly things because we are citizens of heaven so when Paul says this we are citizens of heaven this is not some sort of future promise like one day you're going to get to heaven and you're going to be a citizen of heaven this is a present reality right now In this moment, although you live on earth, if you've placed your faith in Jesus, you are right now a citizen of heaven. And this impacts and affects everything. When we understand heaven isn't just something we're longing for and waiting to get to in the future, a lot of Christians, they think that way. They think, man, I can't wait to get off this earth earth sucks. I hate it. The earth is so evil. I just can't wait to go to heaven and be with Jesus. And we forget that we are citizens of heaven right now, right here on this earth. And if we're only focused on the future, if all I ever think about is I can't wait to get away from the world and get to heaven, we're going to miss out on how God wants to use us as the church in the world, living as citizens of heaven while we are residents of earth. And so this is so important for us to get and to understand. God has a plan for the church on the earth right now, and that is to live as citizens of heaven. The goal would be to come in alignment with Jesus's prayer. The goal would be this, that we learn how to effectively live in the world, but not be of the world, and yet remain faithful to our God-given mission, which is to reach the world. 
There's a reason that the moment you place your faith in Jesus, he doesn't take you to heaven right away. Because as Brian talked about a couple weeks, God is still on mission to reach the world. Jesus is still in the business of bringing people into his kingdom, of changing people's citizenship, of taking people who are residents and citizens of earth and have their whole life invested in earth and him saying, you know what? I have a better plan for your life. Your citizenship is in me. It's in the finished work of Jesus. And so my prayer for us is that we would understand as the church, man, God has a plan for our lives right here and now, that we would live as citizens of heaven and that we would have an impact on the earth and we would see more and more people placing their citizenship, placing their faith into Jesus, stepping into a relationship with him. So the question for us at the end right here of this first point is how can we shift our understanding from thinking that heaven is just something we're waiting to get to and escape earth to the reality that heaven is here. Heaven is now. Our citizenship is here and now. And my hope is that we would begin to live into that. My hope is that we would begin to see that God has a plan to bring heaven to earth. And he does that through the church. He does that through us, through citizens of heaven We are bringing the culture of heaven, the kingdom of heaven to this earth, to the people that we come in contact with every single day. So my prayer is that your perception of of heaven would begin to change. It's not just God, take me away from this earth and hurry up and get me to heaven. It's God, help me right here and now to live into the present reality, which is that right now I am a citizen of heaven, which is so incredible and so amazing. So heavenly citizenship, number one, it's a present reality. It's not just a future hope. Number two, again, we're talking about what it it looks like and what it means to live and reorient our lives as citizens of heaven. Number two, as citizens of heaven, we live by a different constitution and a different set of laws. Here it is again. Number two, as citizens of heaven, we live by a different constitution. We live by a different set of laws. The, again, the, 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 the readers of this letter in Philippi, they would have understood this because, again, Philippi was uh, in the province of Macedonia, and yet it was a Roman colony. And for Roman citizens who lived in Philippi, which was a part of Macedonia, they were subject to Roman laws. If you were a Roman citizen living in the colony of Philippi, you were under different laws than people who are not a part of that Roman colony. And as citizens of heaven living on earth, we live by and we subject ourselves to a different set of laws, and that is the law of God. That is the word of God. Now, that doesn't mean that as followers of Jesus, we just disregard and throw out the laws of culture. It doesn't mean, well, I'm a Christian, so I don't have to obey and listen to the laws of the land and obey what the government says. No, Paul actually talks about that in the book of Romans, how government is a divine institution that God has put in place, and we are to respect and come under those laws so long as they don't contradict the law of God. But as citizens of heaven, our, again, primary allegiance is to the law of God. We walk by and we live by the word of God, the law of God above all else. Peter wrote this in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Listen to what he said. He's again talking about as citizens of heaven living on the earth, how we live by different laws and what that means. Here's what he says. He says, beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles. That's what we are on this earth. We're sojourners and we're exiles. He says, I urge you as sojourners and exiles, abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul keeping your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. What a beautiful exhortation. He says, as strangers, as sojourners, as exiles, he says, we are to abstain from the passions of the flesh, the things of the world which which wage war on our soul. Why? So that our conduct, he says, may be honorable. And so that people in the world, people who don't have heavenly citizenship, will see something different. They'll see the culture that we're a part of, the culture of heaven, the way that we live that is different, and that they, by our good deeds, would glorify God, that they would become a part of the kingdom of God. So this is so important for us to understand that the law of God and the word of God is the standard by which we, citizens of the kingdom of God, live by. I live my life, you live by your life. The church lives our life together 
by the law of God, by the word of God, our standards and what I determine to be right and wrong and how I live my life isn't determined by the standards of culture. Because here's the reality. Culture continues to shift. Culture continues to change. And right now we're seeing this more and more in the current culture we're living in. Culture is continuing to say more things are acceptable, more things are okay, more things become normal. And for us as citizens of heaven residing on earth, we don't just say, okay, here's what culture says is okay, uh, therefore now I can do that. We say, I'm a citizen of heaven, therefore I, I live by the law of heaven. I subject myself under the word of God. And this is what the psalmists write over and over and over again, how we as citizens of heaven, as people who are a part of the kingdom of God, our delight is to be in the law of God not in the law of culture, not, okay, culture says this is okay, so I can do it, is God, what do you want for me? How do you say I should live my life as a member of your kingdom, as a citizen of heaven? And I love Psalm chapter one, verse one and two, how it describes this. The psalmist writes, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but... His delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, he meditates day and night. He says, man, as, as, as people who are citizens of heaven, we should not walk in, in the way of sinners. We should not walk in the way of culture. He says, we should rather delight ourselves in the law of God. What is that? That's the scriptures. We should delight in it day and night, meditating on it. The psalmist in Psalm chapter 119, verse 16 says this, I will delight in your statues. I will not forget your word. And this is something more and more which we need in our day and age. We need to be a people, the church needs to be a people who is delighting in the statues of God who is delighting in the word of God, who says, I will not forget your word. And when you understand this, that as a citizen of heaven, we primarily say, God, I'm subjecting my life to what you say to be true. I'm coming under your law. I'm believing that your law is good and right and true. It's not burdensome. It's not something that I have to do. It's God, I know that you're good and this is something I get to do. I get to come into agreement with what you've declared to be right, what your law has stated to be good and true. And God, I understand this is not for, for my harm, it's for my benefit. God's law for God's people is for our benefit. He knows what's best for you. He knows what's best for me. And he wants us to walk in his way so that we can walk in joy, so that we can experience the joy that he has for us in a relationship. And so this is something more and more as a church that I'm praying that we would grow in, that we would more and more as culture says, hey, here's all the things that are now acceptable according to the laws of culture. We as a church would be wise. We as citizens of heaven would be wise and we wouldn't say, hey, this is an acceptable law now. I can go and do this. We would say, God, what does your word say? Which doesn't change, which is timeless and which is true. And saying, God, although culture says this is okay and that I can do this, I'm gonna say yes to what you have for me. And so my question for you to just pause for a moment here and reflect would be this, man, what areas of your life have you settled to live by the laws of culture rather than the law of God? And this is something that we need to ask ourselves every day. God, what areas of my life right now am I compromising your word? Am I compromising your law? Am I living like my residency and my citizenship is of earth? What areas of my life are, are there that I'm disconnecting from what you've said to be true? And the reality is we're all struggling with this. We all have different things in our life where we're getting sucked into and buying into the ideas of culture. And that's why we need to be rooted in the word. It's the law of God. And that's my prayer for us and my hope for us that as citizens of heaven, we would realize the law that we live by is the law of God and that we would delight ourselves in it day and night that we would meditate upon it. So number two, citizens of heaven, we live by a, a different creed. We live by a different law and that is the word of God. And man, if right now you, you, you aren't doing that, I wanna encourage you, just be in the scriptures. Get in the word, open the scriptures, say, God, what do you have for me today? Every day as you do that, you're gonna to continue to grow into your identity. You're gonna to continue to understand more and more your citizenship as a citizen of heaven and a resident of earth. Number three, which we'll close with this. Again, we're talking about 
How do we live practically as citizens of heaven while we're here on this earth? What, what does that look like? How do we actually do that? And number three is this. As citizens of heaven, we are to exemplify the values of heaven. Number three, as citizens of heaven, we are to exemplify the values of heaven. Again, Philippi, Paul, Paul's writing to the church there in Philippi. He's writing, hey, you guys are citizens of heaven. And again, Philippi was a Roman colony. And Roman colonies were set up as miniature Romes. It was like a miniature Rome. And their whole goal was to foster the values and the majesty of the Roman culture of the Roman Empire. Again, no matter how far residents from the Roman Empire were, if they were living in a Roman colony, didn't matter how far they were from the homeland, they would submerge themselves, their interests, their profits, everything about their life would be for the benefit of Rome, to preserve and protect Rome, to guard the values of that culture. And so Paul's metaphor here is a reminder to the Christians as citizens of heaven, he says, we're citizens of heaven, but we're living here on this earth. But again, our citizenship is in earth. Our citizenship is in heaven. And so we must continually be faithful to present and preserve the culture of heaven, although we are living in the midst of an unholy culture, which is here on this earth. Here's the beautiful thing. The church is the outpost of God's kingdom. The church is the outpost of heaven here on this earth. And so we have the privilege to partner with Jesus and say, while I'm here on this earth, we get the privilege of saying, God, what does the culture of heaven look like? And how do we bring that to earth? How can we show the world a culture which is so far and values things so differently from what God values? How do we show them the values of the kingdom? How do we stay true and live into our identity and bring the culture and bring the values of heaven to this earth? This is the privilege that we have as followers of Jesus. We get to exemplify and we get to show forth and we get to live into the values of heaven as we're here on this earth. And here's just a couple practical things of what that might look like. While the world says, how much can I get? The church must say, how much can I give? Again, residents of earth, it's about what can I get? Residents of heaven, it's man, what can I give? While the world says, how do I get to the top? The church as citizens of heaven must say, how can I serve from the bottom? This is what Jesus did, right? He didn't come to be served, but to serve and gave his life a ransom for many. And man, how beautiful would that be if we, the church, truly said, hey, it's not about getting to the top. It's not about look at me. It's about how can I come and how can I serve other people from the bottom like Jesus did? That's the values of heaven. And that's the contrast with the values of earth, which he says, get to the top, get to the top, get to the top. The values of earth would say, um, ultimately, how is this going to benefit me? That's all people ask. That's all the world wants to know. How is what I'm doing right now going to benefit me? That's the value of earth. The values of heaven, though, for the church as citizens of heaven, we must say not how is this going to benefit me, but how is this going to benefit other people? How is what I'm doing right now going to serve and benefit and bless the people around us? Again, this is the purpose of our lives. This is the purpose of the church. This is what it looks like to be a citizen of heaven. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the people that God has placed around us who we can impact, who we can encourage, who God wants to use us in their life. While the world values wealth, while the world values greed, the church must be marked by generosity. While the world values getting what we can here and now, getting it all immediately, the church must be marked by patience, understanding that it's not about the here and now. I'm not living for the here and now. My kingdom's not of this world. As Jesus' kingdom wasn't of this world, we must be marked by patience. While the world says, man, get revenge on those who harm you, get revenge on, on those who stab you in the back, the church must be marked by grace. The church must be marked by mercy. The church must be marked by forgiveness. These are the values of heaven. These are what we see modeled by Jesus Christ himself. We must be willing to pray as Jesus said, to pray for your enemies, pray for those who curse you, to turn the other cheek. Man, what would it look like if citizens of heaven really lived in this way? These are the values of heaven, which we live into while we're present on the earth. And so this is something that Jesus is calling us to partner with him 
in every single day. Is my life reflecting the values of earth or is my life reflecting the values of heaven as a citizen of heaven? While the world values self-preservation, we must be a people who is marked by self-sacrifice. Even as Jesus himself, again, came to this earth and laid down his life on our behalf, this is what it means to be a citizen of heaven while we live on this earth. God, every single day, help me to take up my cross, deny myself, die to myself, and, and follow you. That's the cost of discipleship. That's the cost of living truly into our citizenship that God has given us and that he made, has made possible through the finished work of Jesus. Here's the thing. Our citizenship in heaven is only possible because of Jesus. Because he, the only true eternal citizen of heaven, left his citizenship behind. He, he left his throne. He, he left his homeland. He left heaven and he came down to this earth. The king stepped down from his throne. The citizen of heaven left it and took on earthly citizenship. He left it all behind so that you and so that I could become a part of his kingdom so that we wouldn't have to say, all I have is the here and now, all I have is this earth. Man, he came to this earth to give us something greater to live for. And he laid down his life and he went to the cross and he died for you and he died for me. And three days later, he conquered death so that you and so that I, through faith in him and through faith in the finished work of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection, through faith in him, we receive new citizenship. And our hope is no longer in this earth. This earth is just a temporary home whereby we reside for a few short years, but our citizenship is in heaven because of the finished work of Jesus. And so my question for you is this. Number one, have you received that heavenly citizenship? Have you received your citizenship as a citizen of heaven? Jesus has made this possible and available to every single person through faith in his death, burial, and resurrection. If you're here and you've never placed your faith in Jesus, Jesus wants a relationship with you. He wants you to be a part of his kingdom. He wants to give you something more to live for than this temporary earth. He wants to give you something greater, eternal life in and through him. And so if you haven't received that, today you can do that. Today you can receive the free gift of new citizenship and leave behind the, the citizenship of this earth that you're born with and become a citizen of heaven through the finished work of Jesus. And secondly, if you're here and you have received that citizenship, which as the church we have, as the church, we are citizens of heaven. Are we the church? Are we the people of God? Are we citizens of heaven reflecting the culture of heaven, reflecting the values of heaven and bringing them to this earth so that we can continue to see the kingdom of God expanding, so that we can continue to see more and more people finding their true citizenship in Christ. We are a part of that process, which is why we're in the world, but not of the world. And so that's my prayer for us today, is that we would recognize God has us here for a purpose and that your life and my life wouldn't look like the culture of the world, wouldn't reflect the culture of the world, but that it would reflect the culture of heaven, that our values would come in alignment with the values of heaven, that the law that we live by would be subject to the law of God and what he says to be good and right and true. And as we do this, as the church, as we begin to live into our true identity as citizens of heaven, we're gonna see the kingdom expand. We're gonna see his kingdom come and his will be done on earth even as it is in heaven. And that's what we're praying for today. So, hey, we're gonna close with one final song of worship. And after this song, I'm gonna come back up and I'm gonna leave us with just a couple questions to reflect on and to ponder. So let's enter back into a time of worship at this time.
Well, thank you again for joining us for another Sunday morning here with A Story at Home. We're here every Sunday morning on our YouTube channel at 10 a.m. Make sure to subscribe below if you haven't already. And before you guys go, I wanted to take just a few minutes to share a couple reflection questions that you guys can discuss and pray through with the people who are maybe there gathered together in your living room. So today we talked about how the church is primarily, as our identity, uh, we're citizens of heaven. Our citizenship isn't here of this 
earth, but the church is literally citizens of heaven. And we talked about how that is a present reality, not just a future hope. And so the first question I wanted to propose for you guys to be able to discuss is, um, have you primarily thought of our citizenship as heaven as something that we just look forward to? Has for you it been, man, I can't wait to get to heaven? Or have you thought through and understood, man, like it, it is a present reality and what that looks like? So I want to allow you guys to be able to just discuss that. Has heaven been something you just look forward to and can't wait to get there and can't wait to get away from earth? Or have you understood, man, my heavenly citizenship affects my life right here and right now? So that'd be the first question for you guys to be able to discuss. The second one, which I want to take a little more time for is to discuss what we talked about for the second point, which was as citizens of heaven, we primarily live by the, the laws of heaven. That is the laws of the kingdom of God. That is the word of God. And so the question for us uh, as citizens of heaven is to really ask what areas of my life have I settled to live by the laws of our culture rather than being in agreement with the law of God and the word of God. And we're living in a time right now where a lot of what the law of culture says is okay is, is not God's heart and God's plan and God's will for us. And so this is something we need to continually ask ourselves, man, am I right here giving into the law of culture and the law of the world, or am I submitting and subjecting myself to the law of God and the word of God and what he says to be good and right and true? So I just wanted to create some conversation around that, man. What are the things in your life that you have a hard time saying yes to the law of God and you find yourself more and more getting sucked into agreeing with the law of culture and what they say? So, hey, I hope this was an encouraging morning for you guys. If you want to spend some time together taking communion with the people in your living room, we highly encourage encourage that. If you want to spend time in prayer together, we highly encourage that. And we're just super grateful that you guys have joined us today. We look forward to seeing you guys next Sunday at 10 a.m. right here for the story at home. And again, please reach out during normal office hours. If there's anything that we can do for you, we'd love to pray for you guys and be available to chat or whatever you guys need. Please reach out. We love you guys. Hope you guys have a great week. See you next time.